Good morning, and welcome to All Souls Church in Miami Beach. My name is Father Tim Carr, and I'm the priest here at All Souls. Today is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements. The first is that if you wish to follow along, you may go to www.bcponline.org. Hit the button for the daily office, then hit the next button that says um, Morning Prayer Right to. And follow along with the page numbers as we go along. Otherwise, you can simply use your prayer book at home. Also, I am not wearing a mask as I am alone in the church. But every day when I leave the rectory, I do wear a mask, showing my love and my, my protection for other people that I come in contact in my day. Once again, thank you very much for being with us this morning. We begin this morning on page number 78. Page number 78. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. On page 81. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. And now the Jubilati on the bottom of page 82. We pray together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made, made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm number 105, which may be found on page 738. Psalm number 105, verses 1 through 6, verses 1 through 6, on page 738, Psalm 105. We will read it in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is a reading from the book of, of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. 
And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it was I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I ask you to please turn to page 93. Page 93 for Canticle number 18, which is a song to the Lamb. Canticle number 18 on page 93. We pray together. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Our second reading this morning is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be hoarding, 
but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, leave peace of, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned, and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These words from today's reading from Matthew are in Peter's impulsive response to the devastating news that Jesus, Jesus, his friend, Jesus, his healer and teacher, his beloved, his divine Lord and Savior, would suffer, must suffer must be killed, and then must be raised. Peter, like most of us, reacts to the fact of suffering with fear and denial. Jesus famously replies, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter has reacted out of fear of suffering and loss in the short term in a human reckoning of time. He is focused on the fact that Jesus must suffer and be killed. Jesus continues, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. You see, it refers to eternal life, a great and glorious future. Jesus instructs Peter to focus on divine things, the promise that his Lord will be raised, and on the last day, we shall all be raised. In fact, Peter knows this. Just prior to the conversation in today's passage, in Matthew 16, 16, in answer to the question, who do you say that I am? Peter has declared that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. 
Jesus has complimented, complimented him on his great faith and offered him the kings to the king, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Peter has just demonstrated one of the paradoxes of being a faithful and human Christian. We believe that suffering will be vanquished for all time. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. At the same time, we live in the world and we are committed to alleviating suffering where and as we can. In this, Jesus is our model. In the work of feeding the hungry and healing the sick and blessing the dying, loving God and loving our neighbor, wearing a mask and loving our neighbor. It seems that we are set to set our minds on both human, the practical, as well as the divine matters. Jesus is, after all, in his incarnation, the point where the reality of God enters the reality of this world. He, Jesus is where human and divine purpose are united. In today's reading from Exodus, where we have another moment where holy mystery meets the reality of this world, God declares, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. Moses is tending his father-in-law's flocks, going about his daily business. The reality of the world, suffering and hard work is in the forefront. Suffering and hard work and loneliness is in the forefront for us today as well. By appearing in a bush that blazes but is not consumed, God reminds Moses of the holy mystery of the divine. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. The first response of the human to the divine encounter must be reverence. As God makes clear in this passage, reverence is to be followed by action. Moses' given task is to go to Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of bondage. In this passage from Exodus, there is a magnificent linguistic device that juxtaposes the imperative of the now. Moses' task of leading his people away from suffering with the great mystery of eternity. Moses asks God for a name so that he can tell the Israelites who sent him. I am who I am, says God. The Hebrew Eleha Asher Eleha is an impressively godlike answer. But in Hebrew grammar, there is no verb tense. Rather, the placement of the personal preposition indicates whether the action has concluded or not. It can be interpreted as both, I am who I am, or I shall be who I shall be. You see, God is now and God is eternal. By calling on God's great name, we acknowledge that we live simultaneously in the moment as well as for all eternity. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. In today's passage, Paul gives instructions to the community in Rome for living a good and faithful life. When Paul speaks of rejoicing in hope, he is speaking of a truly biblical hope for the awaited day when the Son of Man is to come with his angels to the glory of God and usher in the kingdom of God on earth. Paul continues, be patient in suffering, because on that day, suffering will cease. Persevere in prayer, because this is the reverent response to the divine. Prayer that leads act always to action. Contribute to the needs of the saints 
extending hospitality to strangers. Serve the Lord with vigor, ardor, and zeal. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. And do it now. Jesus reminds us that we do not have much time Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In the early Christian communities to whom Matthew and Paul wrote, there was a strong sense that the kingdom of God was coming very soon. The familiar blessing paraphrased from the Swiss philosopher and poet Henri Frederic Amiens synthesizes Jesus' admonition and Paul's advice. You may have heard this before. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel this journey with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. Jesus, in revealing that the Messianic era is imminent, also explains how the disciples are to live in the intervening time. They are to live with the paradox of faith. One of the great paradoxes of Christianity is that the Messiah must suffer and die before he is raised to eternal life. This paradox makes a concrete statement of the Christological idea that Jesus is the embodiment of both the reality of the divine and the reality of this world. Jesus even issues his instructions to the disciples in the form of a paradox. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. We are to live the way of the great I am and the glorious I shall be. We are to live a life of reverent prayer and a life of faithful action. We are to live as if we do not have much time left, and as if we have all the time, all the time in the world. German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote from his prison cell, as he faced suffering with great faith, What remains for us is only the very narrow path, sometimes barely discernible, of taking each day as if it were the last, and yet living it faithfully and responsibly as if were to, there were to be a great future. This is the divine way. It is also the human way. We know it is the Christian way. This is the mystery and the paradox of faith. Amen. And now, I ask you to please turn to page 96, where we will pray together the words of the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. On page 97.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At the bottom of the page. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep your, this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, grant, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On page 98, a call it for Sunday. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life in the middle of page 99. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the prayer at the top of page 101. The top of page 101. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. At this point, we bring our intercessions and thanksgivings to God. We remember all those affected by the wildfires in California. We remember those who have died from COVID-19. We remember those who have been sick and are recuperating from COVID. We remember all those who are, who are having financial difficulties due to this particular pandemic. And now let us pray the general thanksgiving on 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom on the top of page 102. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Please take care of yourself. Be careful. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.